So you're sitting on your couch with your buddies watching the game, and you ask your one friend, hey, who did you take in this game? And he says, oh, I found a really sharp play on the Guardian's money line. And you go to yourself, number one, I should probably bet the Guardian's money line right now. Number two, what the heck does a sharp play mean? In this video, we are going to dive into the core concepts or the foundational building blocks of profitable sports betting. This can be universally applied, whether you're putting together a DFS slip on prize picks or underdog, or you're just looking to bet the Guardian's money line. Making money sports betting isn't difficult, and there's some simple math that I'm going to teach you. And once you learn it, it's going to truly transform your sports betting journey. So the next time you hear one of your buddies say that they got a sharp play, you'll know exactly what they're talking about. Most beginning sports bettors don't understand these concepts, and it's the number one reason why they are consistently losing. But first, I need you to smash that subscribe button if you want to beat the sports books. We upload videos every week teaching you how you can become a profitable sports better, the strategies, the tips, and you're not going to want to miss a video. This is going to be a video that you can bookmark and reference time and time again so that you can determine when you're looking at a certain play, are you receiving great value or are you getting ripped off? So the first thing that we need to determine in becoming a profitable sports better is our implied win percentage for a particular play. You see, all these sports books set their odds on their own, but there's really a few A students in the classroom that we want to reference as our guide time and time again. This is no different than when you sit down in class and your teacher walks in and says, Hey guys, guess what? We're going to be doing a three-person group project and you're allowed to pair up with whoever you want. Naturally, you don't want to pair up with the kid sitting next to you, Tommy, because Tommy gets C's and D's. One, 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 two, kid can't even read. Two. You look across the room and you locate the A students in the classroom. That's who you want to pair up for your group project. And in this example, it's going to be Pinnacle and Bookmaker. These two sports books are widely regarded as the sharpest or most accurate sports books in the world. So the odds that they set for each game is a very close representation of what's going to happen. This is no different than the price is right when that one person always seems to be so close to guessing the actual price of the item that they're bidding on. So now that we're going to partner up with Pinnacle and Bookmaker in our group project, let's dive into an example of figuring out our implied win percentage. For the example that we're about to jump into, in order for us to find out what our implied win percentage is, we need to remove the VIG from the odds in order to figure out what the fair price is. You see, the VIG or spread or house edge is what the sports books charge you. It's how they make money. So they have this baked into their odds already. Now that our group project team is set and we paired up with Bookmaker and Pinnacle, we're going to use their odds as a reference and we're going to remove the VIG from their projection to find out what the fair price should be. Looking at the Yankees versus Red Sox money line play, who's going to win the baseball game? You can see that a bunch of sports books here offer their opinions and odds on what they think the true outcome is going to be. Our two A students in the group project showed up to class today with Bookmaker and Pinnacle. On the left-hand side here, you could see the best odds for the Yankees and the Red Sox. So for this example, we are going to want to reference Pinnacle's odds. One thing that we're going to have to do is pull up a no VIG fair odds calculator. Over here in Odds Jam, guys, down at the bottom on the calculators, we have a bunch of wonderful free calculators. So we're going to go ahead and start with the no VIG fair odds calculator because remember, like we mentioned earlier, we have to remove the VIG to find out what the true fair price is. So we grab Pinnacle's odds for the Yankees and Red Sox money line right here. We pump these into a no VIG fair odds calculator. We can see that the fair win percentage for the Yankees money line is 52%, while for the Red Sox, it's 48%. For there to be value for us to want to look into the Yankees money line, we need odds less than minus 108. So minus 105, plus 100, plus 105. On the flip side for the Red Sox, we need value to be higher than plus 108, plus 110, plus 115, plus 125. So as we come back over to the baseball game, we know for the Yankees, we need odds below minus 108. Well, the best odds that we can get is minus 111 through all the sports books, so there isn't any value on the Yankees money line. For the Red Sox, we need odds above plus 108, and ah, we see that over a cut, we can get odds at plus 111. We've identified value in the market on the Red Sox money line. That's fantastic, but how much value or edge is there? We have no idea. So we have to come over to an expected value calculator. We'll just wager, let's say $100 as a simple example, the odds that we are receiving over a cut. And then we want to know what the fair win probability is. And that's where this 48.02% comes in handy. We pump these in and we see that we have expected value of $1.32. Or another way that we can look at this, we have 1.32% edge on this play. 
We've now figured out our expected value, but how much should we be wagering on this play based off of this value? That's where a Kelly Criterion Calculator comes in handy. The strategy that I use is 25% Kelly or quarter Kelly, so 0.25. The odds we want to know what we're getting from cut at plus 111, and then our fair win percentage again at 48.02%. We see that the 1.32% or $1.32 of expected value shows up. We should be wagering 0.30% of our bankroll, so just over a quarter of a percentage on our bankroll. And for a $5,000 bankroll, we should be wagering just under $15. My bankroll is $20,000, so what I'll do in this scenario is take 14.89 times it by 4, because 5,000 times 4 gives me $20,000, and I should be wagering $60 on this play. I don't like to have loose change on the end of my bets, guys. I either round up or round down. So over here at Cut, I find the Red Sox money line at plus 111. I go ahead and make this bet public out there so that we can go ahead and lock this in. And that's just how simple it is in terms of figuring out if we have an edge, then the calculators that we need to use to compute the edge. And then once we know exactly how much our edge is, then we can come over to the Kelly calculator and figure out how much we should wager. Obviously this is off a $5,000 bankroll. So if you have a $10,000 bankroll, you double it. And if you have less than a $5,000 bankroll, then just take a percentage of this amount and you'll know exactly what to properly wager. Same scenario, different ball game, Dodgers Astros money line play. If I could expand my group project and to add two other players into the fold, it would be bet online and circa. And for both the Dodgers and the Astros odds, Pinnacle, Circa, Bookmaker, and Bet Online all are aligned within one to two cents of each other. So I have a very strong confidence that whatever I find for the no big fair odds, this is going to be a very true representation. So we'll reference bookmaker here, plus 111 minus 122, throw this into the no big fair odds calculator. And as we can see for the Dodgers, we need odds at plus 116 or higher for there to be value. And then for the Astros, it needs to be at minus 116 or below. When we come back over here to reference, we see that cuts the closest book at plus 115, minus 115, but there isn't any clear value. We need a solid gap between all of these books from the four A students in the classroom to have some confidence that we found an edge in the market. You now have the foundational building blocks in becoming a long-term profitable sports better. You understand that when you go and look at odds between various sports books, you can check to find out if there's an edge. And if there is, how much of an edge do you actually have? And then per your bankroll, how much money should you be wagering on this play? You also now know the calculators that you need to use in order to calculate this and the tool for you over at Odds Jam that will automatically do all of this for you so that you all you have to do, log in and smash the bets. If this is your first time seeing these tools at Odds Jam, we have a masterclass of videos that breaks down every single tool, explains to you step-by-step step how to use the tool so that you can utilize it to its full potential. Click this video right here that's going to talk about line shopping and the impact that it makes on your bottom line. We touched on it in the examples earlier, but this is another foundational building block that will truly transform your sports betting journey.